Two days in a row, Miami Dolphins fans, with our favorite team signing a former first-round offensive lineman. On Sunday, we learned about the Dolphins signing Isaiah Wynn. Well, Monday, we learned about the Miami Dolphins signing former first-round pick Cedric Obawehi. And yes, it has been a while since he was a first-round pick in the 2015 NFL Draft. So I cheated. I did have to go back and remind myself how to pronounce Obawehi. But yes, he is the newest Miami Dolphins offensive lineman. A bit of a journeyman. We're kind of in the same situation that we were with Isaiah Wynn. You're not landing stud free agents at this point in time in the off seasons. We're, we're, we're kind of on that track right now where we're getting ready for OTAs. We're going to be getting set for training camp. We got to fill that roster. We got to get guys that are going to compete. And like I said, Obaway, he eight NFL seasons, five teams drafted by the Bengals, went to the Jaguars, the Seahawks, the Ravens, and most recently with the New York Jets. But you can see eight seasons, very limited action as a starter. 21 starts at right tackle, 14 at left tackle. So like I said, bit of a journeyman since being the 21st overall selection in the 2015 NFL draft. Now he did recently turn 31 years old. He's listed at 6'5", 300 pounds, played in seven games last year for the Jets, starting in five of them. He actually was released kind of recently. I think it was last Thursday. At some point after the 2023 draft, the New York Jets decided that they had picked one. They had picked a got, got a couple other guys. Overway, he wasn't in their plans anymore. They showed him the door. He is now a Miami Dolphin. And like I said, Sunday we learned Isaiah Wynn was brought in, who has primarily played left tackle during his five-year NFL career. So maybe it is that Miami sees Wynn as this guy that, you know what, he can be a backup left tackle in case something were to happen to Teron Armstead. He's no, uh, he, he's familiar with, with being hurt, with being put on the shelf for a little while. So we need quality backup. So maybe these, they see Isaiah Wynn as that guy at left tackle. And then maybe Obaway, he kind of has that, that competition we hear about for Austin Jackson, or at the very least, a backup option at right tackle behind a guy like Austin Jackson, if he indeed starts for the Dolphins in 2023. But regardless, I don't think we should look at these signings as probably anything more than just depth, training camp, opportunity to compete for maybe a starting spot at right tackle, competition for these guys. At the end of the day, a backup role. That's where I think we have to view and kind of place these type of signings. Now, the Dolphins did release a couple of guys to make room for these guys. I didn't do a video about it as it happened. I was on the road at the time. But three of the undrafted free agent offensive linemen that they brought in after the draft have been cut. It was Jarrett Horst out of Michigan State, Alec Jensen out of South Dakota, and DJ Scaife out of Miami. So now we're looking to enter OTAs. You got Teron Armstead, Austin Jackson, Kendall Lamb, Jaron Christian, Keon Smith, Ryan Hayes, who we just drafted in the seventh round, James Tunstall, who has hung on as an undrafted free agent, you got Win, and then today's um, Obawehi. Like I said, it's been a few years since I've had to say that name. They will be the guys competing in OTA's training camp for those spots at tackle. Now, the little bit that I have on him as a player, logged 286 snaps last year. Over those snaps, committed three penalties, only allowed one sack, but his pro football overall grade, run blocking, pass blocking, overall grade combined, was 47.7. Now, how does that mean? Where does he stack up? Pro football focus ratings basically say at 50, you're average. So in this situation, he's a little bit below average based on his 2022 numbers at tackle for the Jets. But what I got on him as a player uh, struggles a little bit with the bull rush power can get him. So that ability to, to anchor, especially in pass protection is, is lacking. That's been one of the things that kind of plagued him in college and was one of the, the things that he's going to have to work on his technique. He's going to have to get stronger. He's going to have to hold up against these more powerful rushers in the NFL. Just hasn't really clicked for him yet. He is known more so as a better run blocker than pass pressure, pass blocker, which is nice in that sense. But if you look about him in, in pass protection, where we'd likely need him the most, that's an alarming situation with him potentially at some point if he earns a roster spot. If he starts at right tackle, if at some point he needs to fill in at right tackle, 
being the protector of Tua Tungavailoa's blindside and having a guy that struggles against bull rush, against pass rushers as his biggest weakness, that is an alarming thing. So much like we talked about Isaiah Wynn on Sunday, another guy that really hasn't lived up to the billing, a former first round prospect that, as you can see, hasn't lived up to the billing, whether it's been performance, whether it's been injury, but just like Wynn now bouncing around from team to team. But regardless, we've got another offensive line that we're rolling into training camp OTAs with. So now we just wait. We got to wait, see if the front office adds any more bodies to the mix or, hey, if this is the crew that we are working with. Let's hear your thoughts on the signing, though. Like I said, back-to-back -back days, back-to-back -back former first-round picks on the offensive line. And at this point, draft capital really doesn't mean anything. So we're going. We got enough of a sample size to kind of judge and grade these guys and see how they're going to fit in moving forward. But like I said, drop your thoughts, your comments in the comment section because, damn it, that is what it's there for. But that's what I have got for today, Miami Dolphins fans. And until next time, fins up.